Hello and welcome to another episode of the Spaghetti Westerns podcast. I'm Tom Betts, your host. We're still on season six. This is episode seven, overall number 120. Today we're going to talk about our history of the Spaghetti Westerns. We finally get to a real Spaghetti Western, Pistol for Ringo. Uh, Whatever became of, we're going to talk about Gene Collins. Uh, Who are those gals this week? Set of guys, it's Dada Galati. Film of the week is Kill Them All, Come Back Alone. I got an autograph of the week. I got a book of the week. Got some posters. A CD of the week will be Pistol for Ringo. I've also got an album of it. And then we'll wrap things up with the news of the week. So uh, let's get going. Uh, History of the Spaghetti Westerns and a Pistol for Ringo. Okay, A Pistol for Ringo is a 65 Italian-Spanish co-production. The Italian title is Una Pistola per Ringo. Spanish title is basically the same thing, Una Pistola para Ringo. A couple of alternate titles uh, are The Angry Gun, which USA was probably a video title, and also called The Ballad of Death Valley, which is also a video title. But it was released in theaters over here as A Pistol for Ringo. Uh, the producers are Luciano Urkeli, Alberto Puglis, Alfonso Balcazar. The director is Ducio Tassari, uh, story and screenplay by Ducio Tassari and Alfonso Balcazar. Cinematography is by Francisco Marin. It's in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music is by Ennio Morricone. And the song Angel Eyes is sung by Maurizio Graf, who we'll talk about when we do the CD and LP of the week. Running time is 100 minutes. Uh, The main cast is Ringo, or Angel Face, is played by Montgomery Wood, which is an alias for Juliana Gemma. Sancho is played by Fernando Sancho. Ruby Brown is played by Hallie Hammond, which is an alias for Lorella De Luca. Dolores is played by Nieves Navarro. And Sheriff Dan, or Sheriff Ben, is played by George Martin. And Major Clyde Brown is played by Antonio Casas. Some other names that you might recognize from the spaghetti western genre is Timoteo, or Tim is played by Pajarito, and that's an alias for Manuel Muñiz. Pedro is played by the great Jose Manuel Martin. Colonel is played by Paco Sanz. And then we have Henry, played by Jose Torres. And Felipe played by the director himself, Ducio Tassari. Story is pretty simple. Ringo, played by Montgomery Wood, is a gunslinger with the face of an angel. That's why he's called Angel Face in some uh, releases. He joins a group of bandits pretending to be an outlaw, hunted by the sheriff, played by George Martin. In fact, he has been hired by the guardian of law and order in exchange for his freedom in a percentage of the money stolen from the local bank if he retrieves the money and captures the outlaws. The outlaw gang has taken refuge at the hacienda of Major Clyde Brown, played by Antonio Casas, and his daughter Ruby, played by Hallie Hammond. And a battle of wits takes place between Ringo, the sheriff, and the outlaw leader, played by Sancho, Fernando Sancho. Uh, This film was came after Fistful of Dollars was released the previous year. And I believe this is the first Spaghetti Western that began the process of creating the anti-hero and the continuing disguising of European actors with American names to try and make the movie going public. Still believe these were American actors and an American Western. Ducio Tassari helped write Fistful of Dollars and the influence shows. Examples, we have Montgomery Wood uh, using the alias for Juliana Gemma, Allie Heyman for Loretta De Luca, George Martin for Cisco Celero. Martin had, as we know, has appeared in at least four previous Spanish Westerns, but this time was well known by Western fans, but he still goes under the name Dan Martin. The opening scene shows two cowboys in town approaching each other with their hands on their pistols, and to all it looks like a showdown. When they are face to face, they reach out, shake hands, and wish each other a Merry Christmas. 
Uh, first thing I thought when I saw that too is, oh no, we got a comedy western, but it really isn't. It's just a play on the opening scene. Uh, we have the slick talking gunfighter who intervenes to not only gain his freedom, but to make some money in the process and continues to increase his demand for percentage of the stolen bank funds when he retrieves them. Of course, the hero is caught and must try to talk his, and fight his way out of his predicament. We have an excellent supporting cast of Spanish actors and locations we will see several times in the future, such as the Brown Hacienda, which in reality is El Romeral, which is in San Jose, uh, Spain, south of Almeria, which appears and again in the big gun down and several other spaghetti westerns. The location still exists today and is in excellent condition, protected by being on private property. The town site is a Spolga city, it's, and also Balcazar Studios. It no longer exists, it was plowed under. Uh, the use of Ennio Morricone begins to solidify his standing as the maestro of spaghetti westerns. Fernando Sancho also establishes himself as the Mexican gang leader. We will come to love and enjoy in countless westerns to come. Before this, and the ones we've covered, usually plays a sidekick or his comedy relief, but here he actually plays the bandit leader that we have come to love and enjoy. This is one of the best and well-known films of the genre, and it made Gemma a star. This is available on Blu-ray in the USA, the UK, and in 4K in Germany. It's available in DVD in Argentina, Brazil, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, Portugal, Spain, Thailand, and the USA. Uh, for information, please consult the Spaghetti Western database. As far as actor profiles, we've done most of these guys before. Ringo or Angel Face is played by Montgomery Wood. As mentioned before, Montgomery Wood is Juliana Gemma. He was born in Rome on September 2nd, 1928. He was killed in a car accident on October 1st, 2013. He was 75. He appeared in 18 Spaghetti Westerns. We covered him in his own episode number 41. Sancho is played by Fernando Sancho Les, who was born January 7, 1916 in Zaragoza, Aragon, Spain, and died on July 31, 1990 in Madrid from a brain tumor. He was 74. Sancho appeared in 64 Spaghetti Westerns. We covered him in his own episode, which is number nine. Dolores is played by Nieves Navarro. Nieves Navarro Garcia was born in Almeria, Spain on November 10, 1938. She was off and billed as Susan Scott. When we covered her before, I mentioned that, but Susan Scott, when you see her name there, it basically means she's going to take some of her clothes off. If you see her as Nieves Navarro, she's basically a drama actress. Uh, Nieves was married to Italian director Luciano Urkeli. He was born in 1929 and died in 2015. They were married from 1972 until his death. Navarro appeared in eight Spaghetti Westerns. We previously covered her in episode number 114. Sheriff Dan or Sheriff Ben, played by George Martin. He was born Francisco Martinez Solero in Barcelona, Spain on September 18, 1937. He was lined up to be a guest on our podcast, but died on September 1st, 2021 in Miami, Florida a victim of COVID-19. He was 84. Martin appeared in 19 Spaghetti Westerns. We covered him in his own episode number 45. Major Clyde Brown was played by Antonio Casas. Antonio Casas Barros was born in A Coruna, Galicia, Spain on November 11, 1911. He died in Madrid on February 14, 1982. He was 70. Casas appeared in 22 Spaghetti Westerns. We covered him uh, in greater detail in episode number 33. Ruby Brown was played by Hallie Hammond. Hallie Hammond was an alias for Lorella De Luca and was born in Florence, Italy on September 17, 1940. She started her film career at the age of 14 in Federico Fellini's Il Bidone in 1955. She was often compared to American actress Sandra D. De Luca appeared in over 50 films and TV series until 2011. In 1971, she married director Ducio Tassari. 
and became an assistant director with him on several films. She is the mother of actresses Federica Tassari and set designer Fiorenza Tassari, both born in 1968. As Hallie Hammond, she appeared in only one other Spaghetti Western, the sequel to Pistol for Ringo called The Return of Ringo. As Hallie Fitzgerald Brown, later the same year, they were, she was, it was made the same uh, later that same year. Lorella died from a brain tumor, which in the last year of her life left her blind. Uh, she died on January 9th, 2013, at the age of 73. Okay, let's move on to whatever became of those guys and Gene Collins. Okay, thanks to Facebook and this broadcast, I was able to learn some information on Gene that is not in print from both his grandson and his son who contacted me via messenger on Facebook. Uh, Gene Ray Collins was born in Los Angeles, California on April 23, 1932. He started his career in films as a child actor with an appearance in, at seven years of age in 1939's The Star Maker with Bing Crosby. He followed that up the following year by appearing along with W.C. Fields in The Bank Dick, and then in 1942 with a role in The Pride of the Yankees. Gene played the role of Billy, the kid in the hospital that Lou Gehrig played by Gary Cooper, visits and promises to hit a home run for. Collins later attended Lincoln High School in Los Angeles. Afterwards, he continued his acting career in films and television, including a 1959 appearance on Rawhide, with Clint Eastwood. He and Clint must have hit it off and they developed some type of friendship as Collins moved to Spain after Clint's success and appeared in 13 Spaghetti Westerns beginning with The Ugly Ones with Tomas Milian and Richard Weiler. Most of his roles were small character parts but he was active in the Gene genre I'm sorry, for almost 10 years. Gene's friendship with Eastwood continued as Collins was cast in probably his best remembered role as Private Babra in 1970s, Kelly's Heroes. It was in this film he also became good friends with Telly Savalas and would appear with Telly the following year in Pancho Villa. Collins would later show up in three episodes of the 1992 American French Spanish co produced TV series, The New Zorro, starring Duncan Rager, which was filmed in Spain. Gene's grandson, Elias, contacted me via Facebook and he he put me in contact with his father, Mark, who gave me some further information on his father. According to Mark, Gene opened a bar in Madrid. Mark told me his godfather is Clint Eastwood, and his brother Daniel's godfather was Telly Savalas, who later on adopted his brother. Uh, in 1968, Gene and his wife, Melanie Luker, divorced, and Mark and his brother returned to the States and over the years, Mark lost track of his father, who remarried June to Kay Shoji, who was born in 43, and she died in 87. They were married in 68. They later divorced after Daniel's birth. I guess that's why Daniel was adopted by Telly Savalas. Today, his whereabouts are unknown. If anyone has any information on Gene, please contact me. Now, if you look up IMDb, it says Gene Collins died. But that is incorrect, as the Gene Collins they refer to was an uh, actor who impersonated both um, uh, Ben Franklin and Nathan Hale. But that guy looks completely different than Gene Collins, and he lived in Fullerton, California, and they're not the same person, just the same name. Uh, Gene Collins, some of his better known Westerns, and I'll list them on both the Facebook and uh, YouTube when the, this uh, episode is broad, broadcast or posted there. He was in the Hellbenders, played a Union soldier. He was in Up the McGregors. He played the square dance caller. He was in A Minute to Pray, A Second to Die. He played a hotel clerk in Doc. He was Fierro's orderly in Bad Man's River. He played Popowski in Pancho Villa. And he was in Sonny and Jed as Francisco's deputy. Also, The Stranger and a Gunfighter. He was a fight promoter. He was in Whiskey and Ghost. He played a saloon patron. And he was in The Revenge of the Black Wolf as a private. 
along with three episodes of, like I said, the new Zorro. Okay, so that takes care of Gene Collins, and we'll move around along to Who Are Those Gals and Dada Galati. Uh. Okay, Alba Dada Galati was born in Milan, Lombardy, Italy on April 8, 1935. She was one of the most active character actresses in Italian cinema in the 1960s and 1970s. Her film debut is thanks to Giuseppe De Santis, who chose her after noticing her in a shop employed as a saleswoman for his film Roma Ora 11 in 1952. In the early 1950s, she formed a successful partnership with actor Albert Farnese, who was born in 26. He died in 1996, both on and off the screen, although I cannot find that they were ever married. Dada worked with such directors as Luigi Zampa and Antonio Perangeli, and would later appear in the 1954 television comedy series E Fratelli Castiglioni, that's the Castiglioni brothers in English. She appeared in 90 films between 52 and 82. Uh, 82 last film was Vieni Avanti Cretino. She played a dentist. After marrying Otto Lugan, a South Tyrolean industrialist, she decided to leave the silver screen for good. But Dada reappeared in 1992 and appeared in six episodes of Un Inviato Molto Speciale as a journalist the TV series. As far as Spaghetti Westerns go, she appeared in 20 films starting in 1964's Lost Treasure of the Aztecs as Ilona and finished in 1973 as Mathilda LeBlanc in The Son of Zorro with William Berger. She was sometimes credited as Diana Garson. She played secondary roles giving life to extremely varied and diverse characters, from bourgeois ladies to unscrupulous adventurers, but also generous and helpful friends. Uh, I'll post a list of her credits on Facebook and YouTube, but a couple I want to mention now are Johnny Yuma in 66 as Susan, Lola Colt in 67 as Virginia Blake, Shotgun with Tab Hunter in 67 as Mary Mulligan, $10,000 for a Massacre in 67 as Scarface or Bobo's Woman, and The Long Rider, Ride of Revenge with Richard Harrison in 70 is Deborah, Luke, or Carter. And Seven Devils on Horseback in 72 as the sisters. Okay, that'll do it for Dada Galati. Uh, we'll move on to the film of the week, which is Kill Them All and Come Back Alone. Bear with me for a sec while I lay these papers out so we can pick them up with ease. Okay, Kill the Ball, Come Back Alone is a 68 Italian-Spanish co-production uh, produced by Edmondo Amani. The Italian title is Amazali Tutti e Torno Solo. The Spanish title is Modelos y Vuelve. Some alternate English titles are McKay's Gold and Go Kill Everybody and Come Back Alone. Uh, is directed by Enzo G. Castellari, who's Enzo Girolomi. Story is by Tito Carpi, whose real name is Frienzo Carpi and Enzo. Screen by play is by Tito and Enzo and Joaquin Romero Hernandez, which is Joaquin Romero Marchant and Francesco Scaramaglia. Cinematography is by Alondro Ulo. It's in Technicolor and Technoscope. Music is by Francesco De Masi. It's a couple of songs, Gold and Come Mai, sung by Raul, whose real name is Ettore Lovecchio. Running time is 100 minutes. The main cast consists of Clyde McKay or McKay Link, uh, which is Chuck Connors. Captain Lynch is played by Frank Wolf. Hoagie is played by Franco Chidi. Decker or Dexter is played by Leo Anchorez. Blade is played by Ken Wood. The Kid is played by uh, Robert Widmark, which is Alberto Del Aqua, and Bogard, played by Hercules Cortez. Uh, a couple of names that you might recognize in the cast is the outpost sergeant, is played by Antonio Molino Rojo. 
and the prison camp captain is played by John Bartha. The story goes Clyde McKay, played by Chuck Connors, is hired by a Confederate general to carry out a raid on a Union stronghold and steal a million dollars worth of gold coins hidden there amongst an arsenal of dynamite. Clyde recruits a group of five unsavory characters to assist him in his ordeal, and with the occasional help of Captain Lynch, played by Frank Wolf, the gang set out about infiltrating the fort, grabbing the treasury, and making their escape. All, of course, does not go strictly to plan as the treasure is stored in a gunpowder magazine. McKay is told by Lynch after the treasure is retrieved to, gil- to kill them all and come back alone. McKay disobeys his orders, escapes with a wagon, and leaves the others behind instead. Bad luck for him, they catch up with him, but neither gets the gold as the soldiers stop them while trying to cross a river, so they dump the gold and enter captivity. It gets tricky when they find out Lynch is actually a northerner and eager to get the gold, but the others are pissed at Mackay as well. When they do make their escape, every man for himself, only Clyde and Decker, make it to the river. Decker's greed gets the best of him, and now Mackay and Lynch face each other, and only one will survive. I won't divulge the ending. The group of men that Mackay a hire to retrieve the gold consists of him himself, which is, he's a leader with brains. Hoagie's a gun expert. Decker's a dynamite expert. Bogart is just a giant man with strength. Blade is an artist with a knife. Kid is an acrobat who kills for a hobby. And Lynch, a cold, icy double crosser. Uh, the, the plot, excuse me, is like several other spaghetti westerns derived from the Dirty Dozen such as Massacre at Fort Holman, The Deserter, Guns of the Magnificent Seven, where men are selected to go on a deadly mission. This follows the same premise. The men are selected for their skills that they can offer to McKay. Enzo Castellari was known as an action director, and he doesn't disappoint. This film is nonstop action, beginning with the opening credits to the final scene. This is one of those, sit back and enjoy what you see. There's little character development, just one scene after another of tension and thrills as the group work as one to enter the fort and get the gold and make their escape. An unbelievable number of punches are thrown, buildings blown up, and extras slaughtered, and everyone is in the cast, as you can tell, are having a ball making the film as they show off their skills as stuntmen. This is pure escapism from start to finish, and director Enzo Castellari is certainly the man to get the job done. Besides Enzo's direction, Alejandro Ulloa's cinematography is a plush, and so is the Francesco Damasi score. Apparently, the title became a rallying cry at Italian football stadiums and was finally adopted as a war cry by the fans of A.S. Napoli. Chuck Connors was apparently recovering from an injury, injury of some sort, and in many of his scenes, they had to use a double. Uh, as far as trivia goes, there's a long distance sh- shot of the fort which sits on top of a high hill. It's the same hill seen in many spaghetti westerns, but Enzo uses Mario Va- Bava trick and tapes a cut out of the fort to the camera lens, making it look like the fort is sitting on the top of the hill. Uh, as far as actor profiles go, we have Clyde McKay, played by Chuck Connors. Kevin Joseph Aloysius Connors was born in Brooklyn, New York on April 10, 1921. Besides being a director, writer, film and TV actor, Chuck was a professional basketball player with the Boston Celtics and baseball player with the Brooklyn slash Los Angeles Dodgers and Chicago Cubs. He was best known for his role of Lucas McCain on TV's Rifleman. Connors died in Los Angeles from lung cancer and pneumonia on November 10th, 1992. He was 71. We covered Chuck in greater detail on episode 78. As far as Hoagie, he was played by Franco Chidi. Franco Chidi was born in Rome on April 23rd, 1935. He was the son of actor Santino Chidi and the brother of actor Sergio Chidi, who was born in 1933 and died in 2005. He appeared in over 70 films and TV appearances between 1961 and 1990. He also wrote and directed one film. 
Uh, Franco died from a heart attack on January 14, 2016. He appeared in one other Spaghetti Western as Bert in 67's Kill and Pray with Mark Damon. Decker was played by Leo Anchoris. Mariano Leopardo de Anchoris Bustel was born on September 22, 1929 in Almaria, Spain. He appeared in 40 films before his untimely death at the age of 58 from heart disease on February 17, 1987. Leo appeared in 11 Spaghetti Westerns, and we covered him before in episode number 103. Bogard is played by Hercules Cortez. <clears throat> Bear with me on this name. Alfonso Carlos Chicharo Lamami de Clarique was born in San Sebastian, Spain on July 7, 1932. Before he became an actor, he was a professional wrestler. He was the world wrestling champion in 1962 the World Heavyweight Champion in 65 and won the World Heavyweight Tag Team Championship with Red Bastion in 1971. This was only six weeks before he was killed in a car accident in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where he and his family lived. He was only 39. Cortez appeared in one other Spaghetti Western in 68's I Came, I Saw, I Shot as the giant Fuentes brother. This film was also directed by Enzo Castellari. Blade was played by Ken Wood. His real name is Giovanni Cianfriglia, who was born in Anzio, Italy on April 5th, 1935. He was a stunt, he is a stuntman, film, TV actor. His brother is cameraman, stuntman, and actor of Domenico Cianfriglia, 1938. They're both still living. Giovanni was billed also as Jody Wanger, Phil Carson, and John Richman. He appeared in 38 Spaghetti Westerns, and we covered Ken in episode 115. Kid was played by Robert Widmark. Robert Widmark is an alias for Alberto Dell'Acqua, who was born in Campobasso, Italy on May 14, 1944. He is one of the five Dell'Acqua actors and stunt people and ex-circus uh, acrobats. His brothers are Arnaldo, born, born in 38, Roberto, born in 46, he died in 2019, Ottaviano in 1955, and actress Maria Gabriela. She was known as Fern Water. She was born in 42. He's appeared in 30 Spaghetti Westerns, and we covered him in episode number 35. Lynch, played by Frank Wolf. Walter Frank Herman Wolf was born in San Francisco, California on May 11, 1928. He was a writer, cameraman, theater, film, and TV actor. He appeared in 12 Spaghetti Westerns and is best remembered as Brett McGain, McBain in 1968's Once Upon a Time in the West. He committed suicide on December 12, 1971. We covered him in his own episode number 65. Okay, let's go on to CD or an LP of the week. Okay, this is A Pistol for Ringo by Ennio Morricone. It was first released on an LP back in 1972, I'm sorry, 1998 out of Italy on the RCA label, number NL33209, has 19 tracks uh, for Return of Ringo and 10 tracks for Pistol for Ringo. Does contain the vocal by Mauricio Graff, has a listening time of 35 minutes and 42 seconds. Its value ranges from $2 to 55 bucks. Then we have the CD, which came out in 2004 on GDM. This is on GDM 2044. It has 26 tracks for Return of Ringo and 14 tracks for Pistol for Ringo and the vocal by Mauricio Graff. Listening time is 49 minutes and 45 seconds. Its value has increased to $27 to 110 bucks, depending on condition. Then we had another real release of the CD. Uh, in 2010, also on GDM, it's on GDM 4134. Again, 21 tracks on the return of Ringo, only 11 on Pistol for Ringo. It does contain the vocal. Listing time on this one 
has increased to an hour, 12 minutes and 37 seconds. And its value has from $30 to $110, depending on condition. So as the listing time increased, so did the value. Uh, we're going to talk about now Maurizio Graf, the singer of a pistol for Ringo. Maurizio Anastasio was born in Giorgia, Friulia, Venezia, Giulia, Italy in 1941. He was an Italian singer and film actor. He graduated from the Dante Alighieri Classical High School, and during his university studies, he began to take his first steps as a singer, participating in the historic competitions organized at the, I guess it's UGG or UGG in the early 50s winning two consecutively. Later, he then joined as a singer in the Giorgia musical group of E. Vagabondi, which was very popular at the time. The group had also acquired notoriety outside the region, so much so that it was called for two years to perform during the winter at the famous Hotel Miramonte in Cortina, and made some recordings also with RCA in Rome. At the time of the largest, at that time, the largest Italian record company. Maurizio moved to Rome and came to the attention of experts. Thus came his most important call to work together with Ennio Morricone, of whom he became a close and trusted collaborator. He sang on the soundtracks of For a Pistol for Ringo and The Return of Ringo. In those same years, he continued to work with Morricone, an exciting collaboration, according to Maurizio who also recalled an interview he, uh, he gave a few years ago. His friendship with Morricone continued strengthened by constant correspondence. Unforgettable for the singer from Gorizia was also a trip to London in 2012, invited by the Spaghetti Western Orchestra, who asked him to sing two pieces by Morricone on the stage of Elizabeth Hall in front of 2,000 people. You can find this rec uh, presentation on YouTube. It's well worth your search. His Spaghetti Western main title theme songs include Killer Adios in 68, A Pistol for Ringo, A Return of Ringo, Killer Caliber 32 in 67, where he sings Amica Colt, and The Wild and the Dirty in 68, he sings Find That Man. Okay, let's talk about Book of the Week. Okay, this is uh, Book of the Week. I know some of you people don't think Zorro movies can are counted as Westerns, but I do because they're in the West, they're in California, and they cover uh, Western characters. Uh, this is called Zorro's Shadow, How a Mexican Legend Became America's First Her Superhero. It's by Stephen C. Andrus. It's by the Chicago Review Press. It was released in 2020. It has 276 pages in English does contain a few pictures, posters, and it's basically his search for how the legend became a fact and who's it based on, because there's several different legends on who Zorro really is. Joaquin Murrieta is one, a couple of Mexican freedom fighters another, and it's well worth the uh, uh, read because he actually goes to Mexico and traces them down. It's just not looking up something on the internet. Anyways, I, th I thought it was a very good read. He covers all the Zorro films, so uh, it's well worth picking up. You can get it at Abe Books or probably Amazon.com. Okay, uh, let's go on to a few of the uh, posters from The Poster Addict. Okay, first couple I've got here are from uh, Pistol for Ringo. This is the Belgian poster. Always nice artwork on those. And then we've got the American Pistol for Ringo. This is a biggie. Okay, now you tell me what the man called Ringo and the river called Rio Grande were two of a kind. What does that have to do with anything? And I've got Kill Them All, Come Back Alone. This is the window poster. 
in English, probably from uh, the UK. And then I've got the American poster. And the Americans, usually as lazy as they are, use photos instead of artwork. But uh, I'll take it. Okay, let's wrap things up with news of the week. Okay, not a lot going on this week, but there are a couple of releases and a couple of boot hills. We've got a new Spanish Blu-ray release of Isaraña Forma de Vida, Strange Way of Life. Uh, came out this year, directed by Pedro Almada Amadovar, starring Ethan Hawke and Pedro Pascal. It was released on December 5th on Beta Pictures label. It's in Spanish only and runs 60 minutes. I guess we'll get these for every country that uh, it's shown in as a release. Uh, there's also been a new German Blu-ray DVD combo of One de la Kain and Sarg, which is The Ugly Ones. That came out in 66, was directed by Eugenio Martin, starred Richard Weiler, Tomas Milian, and Helena Zaluska. This was released on December 7th on the Explosive Media label. It's in German, English, Italian, and Spanish languages with German and English subtitles. It has a running time of 94 minutes. Extras include a booklet and interviews with Tomas Milian and Eugenio Martin. It also has an alternative ending from the Italian version gallery. Someone's going to have to explain that one to me. I've only seen the one ending. So if there's another ending out there, if you find it someplace, uh, YouTube or Daily Motion or whatever, let me know. I'd like to see it or just describe it to me. Uh, as far as Boot Hills, we have two. Uh, Alberto. Gadia or Gadea, the cinematographer Paco Martin or Morin Andrew posted on December 1st on Facebook that he had received an early phone call that morning from Monica Gadia, the daughter of actor and master of arms Alberto Gadia, that her father had passed away the day before on November 30th. Alberto was born in Barcelona in 1933 and appeared in 23. Films between 1964 and 2017, among those films were 15 Spaghetti Westerns, among which were $5,000 on one ace. He played Gypsy in 64, Seven Pistols for a Gringo, played Jed Tennessee, who killed Johnny R. Uh, both of those were in 65, Gentleman Killer and Via Rides. And he, as himself, he appeared in the documentaries Espolga City, West of Barcelona in 2016, and Goodbye Ringo in 2017. And then we have an oddball, and bear with me on this pronunciation. Govadariza Govadarica died on December 5th in Los Angeles. He was born in Gako, Yugoslavia in 1940 as Vajislav Govadaric. At a very young age, he became famous as a wrestler on the Yugoslav youth national team and then worked as a bouncer in discos and pubs, first in Gakko, then in Belgrade, where he moved in his early 20s. In order to appear in some action films where he played roles in uh, films that demanded a muscular character. Uh, in 68, he was called to play the role of Philadius in The Odyssey and in a spaghetti western entitled The Man with the Long Gun with Lex Barker, in which he played an Indian chief. Uh, in 1981, he decided to go on to the United States to try acting in Hollywood. He was noticed by Sylvester Stallone because of his imposing physique and his Herculean strength. He was given the role of a cynical and silent sergeant, Yushin, in Rambo II, and then moved on to act in films with Jean Claude Van Damme in The Lioness and then on to roles of various types in both American and Serban language cinema. Govadarica appeared in three Euro Westerns, Massacre at Marble City in 64 as Big Wolf, The Man with the Long Gun in 68 as Red Buffalo, and The Hellhounds of Alaska in 72 as Achua Hua. 
Okay, that wraps it up for this week. Uh, Till we meet again down the road, this is Tom Betts saying adios, amigos, and this has been a Roberto Genesi production. Adios, amigos.